being able to sit down and look at those things, I think is really important. Being able to say, how, how do we make these two things work? How do we put these two pieces together? Really critical. So we can say, let's work through this in a way that's consistent with our goals. Let's get from where we are now to where we want to be on the race itself. So it could be successful, right? So identifying those races and putting them down. So a simple process will be um, sitting down and having um, a brainstorming session about the races or things that you want to do. This would happen either at the end of the prior year, or beginning of this year, and sort of talk a little bit about what will be success for you? What would be really cool if you could do that, right? There's always considerations with health and timing and money that come into play with actually being able to do a race, but we can have aspirations and we could talk about those collectively and flesh out a general, even if it's just sketched out, sketched out version of what the year would look like. So we can start making some decisions relative to races, relative to training cycles, and ultimately want to make sure it works. Because at the end of the day, I always tell people, we remember our races. We remember those big events that we did. We don't necessarily remember uh, that long run that we did in, on June 13th, right? That's not really super powerful to, to us at the end of the day, but we have those race pictures. We have those race memories. Um, we have those training weekend, training getaway memories. And those things are really important. So we wanna make sure that those bigger picture elements, such as races, race selection, work. Doing a race, being able to do a race is great, but doing a race when there's been a cost associated with it, like you know, making someone else, your partner, have to compromise um, or miss out or whatever it may be. I'm not saying it's gonna be a hollow race experience for you, but it's not the same as having that level of synchronicity. Complete synchronicity, maybe not possible, but certainly worth the time investment to have a broader conversation about it and sort of get everyone on the same page of what your aspirations are and see if there's a way to make things work out between the two of you. I think that's really, really important, okay? The next piece of the puzzle is setting some training expectations. And this is where things get interesting, especially in the multi-sport space. There are some people who are really successful at certain disciplines and other people who are not. And if you're in a relationship, it's quite possible that one of you may you know, really enjoy running and run really fast where the other does not, but they really enjoy swimming and swim really fast while you do not. So what are the expectations around those workouts? Um, over time, you'll get more comfortable with defining who you are as athletes within the context of being a couple. Um, but especially at the beginning, or especially as you're starting a new season or starting a new sport, there's different um, potential friction there around how things work. So it's helpful to know that, for example, if you're gonna swim, let's, let's swim in a pool. We can always, you know, we don't swim at the same speed, but we're in the same lane. We're going to the pool together, leaving the pool together. We can talk at the wall. That's a great, for me, I think, sort of overlap of regardless of speed, swimming is fantastic. You can still have that couple mojo, right? When we start talking about cycling, still possible. One of you can ride a little less hard than the other, or one of you can draft the other. So if you've got a stronger cyclist and someone, let's say someone who's riding at 80% and someone else is um, 100% is that person's 80%. So you're like, if we were riding next to each other, I'm at 100% and you're at 80%, that only lasts for so long, right? Because I'm gonna have a miserable day and you're gonna be like, I'm not even really getting started. Um, but if I sit directly behind you, if I get really good at drafting, all of a sudden I'm riding at my 80% and you're at 80%, but I'm on your wheel. Now we're both riding at 80%, yay, right? So there's a way to kind of make that work or maybe you do some markers of the stronger one flips around every couple miles and comes back and they meet up and the Stronger person gets some extra miles, but the other person still gets their training in, that's an easy win as well, right? Maybe there's a group dynamic, you can both attend a group session, do classes together if you're doing indoor training, or if you like indoor training and you've got the smart trainers next to each other in the basement, you can both do a separate workout, but be right there, that's great. There's some overlap there and some consistency, perhaps even some scheduling simplicity as well. The run is where things get challenging. The run is all of a sudden where we turn into saying, oh my, um, uh, depend on height, weight, health, um, running familiarity, running goals, terrain, weather, whatever it is, injury status. Um, running is really hard to find someone you can run with. If you, I don't care who it is, if you found someone that you can run with and you enjoy running with, that is a special thing because it's very difficult to find someone who you can spend that much time with at a similar pace and actually enjoy their company and have a good workout. It's usually there's some sort of compromise in there. So if you found that person, that person is special, don't lose them. Okay, but seriously, when it comes to couple perspective, this is where things get different. Um, this happens in my world as well. And so, you know, we've definitely set some different expectations. We can both run, our kids are older now, we can both run at the same time, but we don't run together, right? So, you know, sometimes we'll warm up or cool down or if I finish a run, we'll finish together. Um, but rarely, we're not really running together because our speeds are just so different. And that's fine. We've come to terms with that as a couple and that's great. We both get to do our runs, we're both excited. And as long as 
you know, her workouts don't load into my Strava and my Strava workouts don't load into her Strava, we're all set because otherwise the world blows up, right? Um, but that can be really challenging. So understanding some expectations and setting expectations on those workouts is important. Um, I think the further you move down the, the path of endurance, the longer the races get, the more um, similar all of our paces get, the longer the day is, the more tired we get, the more similar we are. Uh, and so ironically, athletes doing super long races, ultra races, often train at much closer speeds or race at much closer speeds than they may train at. And um, there's definitely some more overlap for athletes in that space around expectations and training, okay? Next element I wanna talk about um, is, is supporting one another. Um, through the journey, and that is, you know, listening for those challenges, but also celebrating those successes. I think one of the unique elements about endurance sports is it can be, if you let it, an entirely internal or personally focused endeavor where you're saying, hey, I'm totally into this. I'm into the running. I'm into the stretching. I'm into the core.